Hello and welcome to our webinar all about finding out how you can transfer the skills you're learning during your degree and turning them into a fantastic career in business. So thank you for, thank you for coming today and watching us and as you can see we're in a fantastic location, we're in KPMG's headquarters in Canary Wharf. So KPMG is a top four professional services firm, you're going to find out a bit more about that, about what professional services means as well. So the reason why you're joining today is because maybe you're not sure where to take the skills you're learning from your degree, what to do after university, maybe you already know that you want to go into professional services, maybe you've even got your own KPMG, but today we'll just be telling you more about the sector and about KPMG and then how potentially you could work in professional services after you graduate. So as you can see I've got a great panel with me today and they're now going to introduce themselves. I am Divya Gupta, I am a director in our technology enablement practice within KPMG. Um, so we're technology focused, um, we essentially go into clients and we help them uh, look at their business, make it more efficient and usually put a system in place to help them do that. Hello everyone, I'm Nagi Han, I'm a technology consultant, I joined KPMG three and a half years ago on the graduate scheme. Finished the graduate scheme, got promoted to assistant manager, and I help um, clients transform their operations and technology systems. Hi, I'm Fanada. I'm on a one year business placement here currently in technology. I started about six months ago, and I'm in the cybersecurity stream, and so far I'm just learning the ropes really. <laughs> So today's webinar is going to last about an hour and it will be split into two sections. So first of all, we'll be having a panel session and talking to these three ladies and then we'll go to a Q&A. So please do send in your questions. Some of you already sent them in, which has been fantastic and we've actually received quite a few. But it would be great if you keep sending them in live as that we're talking to the panel. If there's any burning questions that you've got, do just send them through via the webinar app. So in our first session uh, around talking to the panel, it will be split into four different areas. So firstly, we'll be talking about professional services, what it means, what a job looks like in professional services, and hearing a bit more about KPMG. In the second part of the panel session, we'll be talking to the panel about their backgrounds, how they got into professional services. We'll be then moving towards kind of how you can actually use the skills that you're learning at university and leverage them to work in a business environment what sort of experience you should be looking to get uh, whilst you're at university. And then finally, we'll be hearing the panel's top tips for success, so what they think you should be taking away from this webinar. So let's jump straight in. And as I said, if you've got any questions, do just send them in via the webinar app. So first of all, Divya, thank you for joining us today. Very uh, so what is professional <coughs> services? What does KPMG do? So KPMG basically um, goes out to their clients and helps them fix things in very simple terms. And that can be the, the breadth of that is what is actually very interesting about professional services. Um, so I'm in technology, um, I will go into an organization and I might speak to their finance department, I might speak to their HR department, I might speak to their technology department. And whatever their issues are, whether it's, I need to make my finances uh, function more efficient, I need to, I've got old systems, I need to replace them, I need to know how many employees I've got. I've actually had somebody say that. Um, whatever it is, we then talk to them and say, how can we help you get to your answer? And Nagahan, Fanella, before you started, <coughs> did you have any preconceptions about the industry? And what were you expecting? And then what happened when you started? Were they shattered? Were they sort of validated? Um, so I wanted to go into consulting because I wanted to do different things. I wanted to do different projects. I didn't want a day job where it would be the same for five years. So I needed that constant element of dynamic, changing pieces of work. So consulting works really well for me. It always keeps me engaged. <coughs> it's always a new issue when you start and you solve it at the end of the day. And it's quite satisfying. Um, before I joined, I did lots of research on what career I wanted to go in. And that was a painful process because I was like, I studied all these topics. I don't know what to do with them. And then I reached out to people, alumni from my university, and I spoke to them and I found that te I mean, technology consulting was the right fit for me. And when I joined, it was what I, what I expected and more. I thought it'd be more challenging. I thought I'd be way out of my comfort zone, but all my colleagues have been extremely supportive and helpful, so it felt a lot easier than I thought it would be. Just emphasizing what was just said there, definitely the whole area around relying on colleagues, they're so supportive. So for me, I didn't necessarily know if I technology was 
the one what I wanted to do, but I felt like it was something I needed to learn more about, so that's why I came and joined this area. So I feel like the colleagues, their knowledge, they they support you throughout everything, and that's really been my major, like what I was expecting, and that's what's come from it, really. And Nagahan, you studied uh, humanities, you did languages yeah. and economics. Yeah. What skills did you find that you had from your, that you learned during your degree that actually really helped you since you've joined KPMG? Yeah, they massively helped actually. So I studied economics with German and Spanish at Vassar College in the US. Then I have done a master's degree in international development and economic history at LSE. So I was a big humanities and social sciences person. Um, and I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do when I start this consulting job? Um, but they massively help because in humanities, you really learn how to articulate yourself well. That's what I find, especially with languages. And that's critical for your success. At the end of the day, you'll have many bright ideas in your head, but it is so important to get that across to your audience. So whether that's a colleague, that's a client, that's your manager or the people, the analysts who support you, it doesn't matter. It's all about really communicating well and I found that my humanities degree degrees massively helped. Super. And Divya, before, how did you get into professional services? Accidentally. Yeah. Um, so I've been in professional services for 16 years, we just calculated, so it's been a long time. Um, and I started at another big technology consultancy. Um, and it was accidental, it was, it was essentially um, I had been at a different firm, and and I was, and they, a friend of mine had said, "Oh, they're looking for people," um, and I, I kind of came along. Um, and, and just to reiterate your point, the the kind of most fun part of that when I first started a lot of years ago was um, was the travel. You know, it's the travel and the change and the lots of different projects you can do. Um, and I say to, to a lot of the analysts that I speak to, the benefit of professional services firms and the firms like KPMG are because we're so big you can do almost anything so you come in and you just get lots and lots and lots of varied experience and then you tailor yourself into what suits you so you can try lots of different things um, and see which one fits best and then and then that's where you develop your career and Fenella you're currently doing a placement year during your course how did you hear about KPMG what attracted you to them so I actually did a similar KPMG came to the university and that's where I first found out about KPMG but also just researching online I wanted to go and learn more about technology so in the end that's how I got like where I went from there. Yeah. And I guess this question for all of you where do you see professional services and KPMGs helping you take your career where do you see yourself in five years time what's the dream? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the dream is to make partner clearly mm -hmm. um, that's why young grads join typically so I um, I am a director in our practice, so that's the next level up. Um, but you know, as as you progress through your career, there is a very clear path, um, and there is lots of help, and there are lots of people along the way who, to guide you to say, you know, yes, you should do this, or if you take this project, is that the right one for your next career level? Should you be doing this type of role? Here's what we think you do really well. Here's what we think you do. You need to kind of work on a little bit, um, and, and so all the way through, we have. Um, uh, we have assignees, so we have, we're people managers essentially, so every person that joins gets a set of people who they coach through their career um, and it's typically somebody who's a couple of levels above you so that you're very clear on, on where you're going and they can help you. Just to reiterate that, I'm currently looking at doing it at the Chartered Institute of Management Accounting and that's through my performance manager who there's so many opportunities for training within KPMG, I think that's the major draw for me is that there's always career progression going forward and that's they really do support you in that so I'm hoping to do that when I come back here. Um, my dream is to carve my path to a specialist niche area. Um, when I was joining and when, when I was talking to my parents they would say oh it's a ladder you need to you know climb the steps slowly and surely but actually it's a jungle. <laughs> um, I'm sorry but you just have to find out what you're really passionate about and you have to stay in touch with people, you have to talk to people, find out about what they're doing and always deliver, be responsible, be reliable. So for me the dream is to make partner as well but I know that it's, it's hard work to get there and you just need to sort of keep in mind you know, what, what skills and what subject matter you have to really learn very well to make it there. So that's my goal at the moment. And so Divya, for all our members watching today who've been inspired by the sort of partner dreams, what do you say are the sort of key attributes that you're looking for for new intakes at KPMG? Um, 
so so I do a lot of recruitment and, and kind of interviewing and, and for me it's we teach skills so we don't expect our new grads to come in and know everything about technology and that's just it, it's not the way what we look for is attitude what we look for is people who are bright enthusiastic um, have a can-do approach are inquisitive and who want to learn because that's that's what you that's the opportunity you'll get here if you choose to take it um, we've touched on Fenella and Naghan, some of the training that you've had, so what specifically, um, what courses have you been on, you know, what kind of mentorship have you had, because I think the guys on there would really love to hear about it. Um, for the last three years, so when I was doing my graduate programme, you do so much training, um, anything from soft skills, so as a consultant, what soft skills do you need, how do you speak to the clients, how do you present, how do you negotiate, um, how do you interact with your colleagues, um, and so on, so that's very valuable. You can also choose to do a specialist qualification. Um, you can do the SEMA, like mm -hmm. Fanella mentioned, or you can do a variety of other industry certified programs um, that really set you apart from everyone else. Uh, you can also, I mean, even informally, we have like a coding club in technology, so there are people <laughs> who know a subject really well and they're willing to share and they hold these events and you can just, hey, I've never coded before, you know, I studied German, is it quite similar? And they're like, actually, it's pretty much, yeah, it's like a language you type and you're like, oh, that's really cool. So there are lots of opportunities. It's all about putting your hand up really and doing your research and everyone will support you from that point onwards. Very well said. Like, <laughs> Brilliant. So it's very much yes, the case that you definitely. will get a lot of support yeah. once you enter the, the sector, yeah. this type of firm. And I think, uh, to be clear, the training continues all the way through your career. So as a grad, you have a very structured training program because there are things you need to learn around how to go out to a client site, how to do a presentation, they're very good at PowerPoint, um, <laughs> how, to, how to use Excel, how to use Word, those kinds of things. As you progress up the ladder, um, so at my level, you still have training courses. So you go out and you do a three-day course on um, making sure that you make a presence, how to how to pitch to a client, how to sell work, how to negotiate a contract, and and you you develop that. So that you know, you, it's not that you do your graduation, you you kind of do your training, and that's it. It does go all the way through and, and up to partner. You, we just carry on. Yeah, oh, that's excellent. And in terms of for our members who are currently looking to apply, is there any sort of like real experience that you look for and that really stands out on CVs, sort of particular activities that they should maybe be looking to, to follow or pursue whilst at university? Um, I, I think for me, the challenge is so there is, there are a lot of very clever people out there today. Um, going out and having other activities always helps. So if you've got work experience, if you're able to go out and say, you know, I've done some charity work or I've done this work and, and it, it's less about the work, it's what did you learn from it? Um, why did you do it? What did you want to get out of it? Um, that, that always helps because that's the differentiator. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. The Any activities, any sort of student societies that you get involved with or any summer internships, they're massively helpful. Um, because you sort of get transferable skills. So if you were at your student society and you had a leadership position and you were responsible for organizing an event, for instance, that's similar to the type of work we do. So you can be the person who's, go, who's gonna go like, you do this, you do that, that's great, you know, and drive that. So that's massively helpful. And like teamwork, especially for, I'm in a, on a project with eight people and hockey and all, I just played hockey at university. <laughs> That's definitely a good way to, you know, interact with your team. You're not going to get anywhere without working together. So that's major for me. Sport is so valuable. That can be really transferable as well. Super. So I think for everyone watching, the key attributes that Divya mentioned, it's worth seeing how you can find experience that actually would help you um, sort of be able to then prove that you, are, you do have those attributes at interview. And for the guys at home watching, what's the kind of like top tip that you want to give them for either success in professional services or for securing a role at KPMG? Or even just, you know, if you're studying a humanities degree, what's the sort of key takeaway really? Um, <laughs> there's one. It's a bit of a big question. <laughs> a good one question. Um, I think, so for me, the top tip is um, do your research, understand a little bit more about what the, what the firm does. Um, uh, and it is about, uh, it's not about skills, it is about attitude. I know I said that, but honestly, it's about being keen and eager and, and being able to articulate that. So, you know, if somebody says, why did you come and join? You don't just go, mm, 
because you know nothing else to do this afternoon, um, which I have actually had before <laughs> when I interviewed, believe it or not. Definitely, um, I'd say enthusiasm and persistence mm. and determination. Um, so if you're coming for an interview, say, um, just prepare really well and know why you're coming here, why it means a lot to you. Um, I remember my own sort of recruitment process, I had to present and even like in the morning as I was showering, I was still rehearsing the lines in my head. So you just have to 100%, put 100% in and I don't see why you know people should not be successful. Moving on from that, a really good top tip that I got told was using the STAR technique. I'm sure you've all heard of it before, but that's the situation, task, action, and then your result. So it's really good to structure your answers so that you know you've got flow, you know what you're going, where you're going with your answer, and just so that you, you you have the result. The result's important. You don't want to talk about an experience and then just not have a good result at the end. And I think that's why a humanities degree has a competitive edge because you become so articulate at you know, writing and talking and speaking and presenting ideas that all, you, you become really structured, so I think they massively help. I think the other, the other reason it's so important is, is one of our, uh, one of the recognitions as you kind of start to, to clients more and more, is that our clients are not technology people. They have, they come from lots and lots of different diverse backgrounds, so we have people who've done history or have done geography or they're just different people whose paths have led them into finance or HR or whatever it is. And so, we need people who can relate to them. People buy from people. People don't buy from books. So we need people who um, are similar minded or able to say, oh yeah, I did that degree. And you know, you want now, I do it now. It's like this. And, and you'd be amazed how much of an impact that has. So we have to broaden the breadth of kind of the types of people that we have in our technology practice um, because, to make us successful out in the workplace. Absolutely. Well, I hope that's answered some of your questions about professional services, what a career in that sector would look like, or even at KPMG. Um, and, but equally, if you've still got more questions, do send them in. We're about to start the Q&A session. So if you've got any burning questions put to the panel, then we're ready and let's get cracking. So we've already received a few of them uh, that you sent in over the last 24 hours. So thank you so much for sending them in. The first one is from Anna. So I think this is, really for the whole panel. Um, can you explain what behavioural capability means? So I'm assuming that she's looked at the KPMG website um, and at the resourcing pages and they're obviously key um, capabilities that KPMG are looking for. So what exactly do you mean by behavioural capability? So I think it's a lot of the attributes that we've already listed, it is my view. Um, there will be, so if it is off the website, there will be a definition of it. So that's, and, and that is actually useful to look at just to be able to relate it back. But I, I do think it's back to um, the different types of attributes that we described, which is people who, are, who have a diverse background, who are interested in different things, who are interested in learning. Um, Super. And one, so another question from Saida is relating to the behavioural capabilities is that resilience is listed as one of them. Yeah. So where can Saida get experience of resilience at university or even in her wider life? I think it could be anywhere. I mean, it's... Is it worth defining it first? Yeah, yeah. resilience. Yeah. So the way I see it, I don't know if you guys will agree, but you, you might find that one day you might solve one issue and the next day there will be another issue and then the day after there might be another issue. Resilience is just to have that perseverance, mm. to always start the day fresh and committing to resolving those issues because at the end of the day we're a professional services firm and we help clients fix their problems. So you can't just say, oh, I had two days full of problems, I give up. doesn't work that way, you still have to go back and fix things. Um, in terms of getting experience, it could be anything. It could be an athletic experience where you had to pass a certain record, or it could be you know you work you, you've done a work placement and you had a difficult relationship. What did you do to solve that? You know, it might mean that you had you know twenty days of constant struggle, but you still persevered and you spoke to the person. You resol resolved the issue. Um, I can't really prescribe a specific experience per se, but 
if you're thinking about what can I say about this behavioral capability, that's just to say you've had a prolonged term of difficulty and at the end you became successful because you didn't give up and it can apply to anything. That's how I see it. Like I was on a client site once and you know we constantly had issues and at times I felt like, oh my goodness, you know, I can't do one more day like this. <laughs> but you still persevere and at the end of the day it always get resolved result because as I said it's all about determination if you're determined to make it happen it will happen so how did you get through those days where it's really tough yeah I had to I worked out um, <laughs> on the weekends I made sure that I went and had fun because with element of resilience you have there's an element of taking care of yourself because if you take good care of yourself you'll have empathy for yourself, then you also have more empathy for other people. So if you're not burnt out, you're not sleepless, and you've had a bit of fun to refresh your mind, you'll come back and you'll be more prepared to take those challenges on. So when I was in a difficult period, I just made sure that I was eating well, sleeping well, working out, spending time with family and friends so I could get a break. And that massively helped, you know, and I went to comedy shows, they also helped, you know. <laughs> So you have another behavioural capability question. Uh, making an impact is listed as an important part of um, working at KPMG. Can you give an example to everyone watching of how they can they can demonstrate they've made an impact? Vanella, maybe you could talk about something you've done at university. Okay. Okay, so for example, while I started at university, I was volunteering for a sustainability, Greg's, it's called Greg's, I know it sounds like the food chain, it's not, <laughs> promise it's an acronym, um, and it was about, I think, making impact, so for example, we were trying to encourage students who don't really care about recycling to care about recycling, so making impact is actually, even if it's a small impact, we did a recycle fashion show, but we circulated it around the university and actually people were more aware. So it might be a small impact, but you've actually changed. So we managed to recycle in that week 2,000 tin cans because we were asking people, we'd walk, we went around and we were getting cans and bottles from people. And it's just, making impact might be small, but it's making, you know, you, you see the reward at the end. So I think that would be one of the examples. I think on that topic, for a lot of undergraduates and graduates today, sustainability, corporate social responsibility is really important. Is that something that KPMG feel is really invested in? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you get days off, um, a number of days off per year just so you can um, engage in sort of corporate social responsibility activities and they're massively advertised. Everyone, everyone volunteers and it's a lot of fun. It's one, it's one day off of work doing something great. Mm -hmm. So that's fantastic, but it's massively promoted. Mm -hmm. That's brilliant. Um, another question from Olga. Um, so again, very similar, it's just if you have any other ideas, but what can she do to, uh, at university to add skills to her CV? So is anything else that's sort of popped into your head? Any experiences that you maybe had that you, you thought really kind of added to, your, to the experience on your CV? Um, no, I, th I think we've probably covered most of them. I mean, generally it is, and it's back to the making an impact. It, it's when you come in to speak to people, it's it's being invested, it's being interested. It's and and that a lot of that comes down to personal. So kind of how you're dressed, how you behave, how you sit, whether you're slouched in the chair, those things make make an impression. And that's the big thing about consulting generally professional services firms, um, but but interviews generally as well is it is that first impression that you make for the person on the other side of the chair of the table um, ma matters right um, and so a lot of these experiences and the descriptions and I think for me it's think about the stories that you can tell think about the examples that you can pull out because as interviews happen people will ask you questions suddenly you can go blank and everybody goes blank but you want to look prepared so you want to look like you've not just turned up and you've actually invested the time up front to uh, because it's important to you right? that, that's what the organization is looking for they want people who who have taken this thing seriously enough um, and therefore they know that when they go out to a client's site they will take it seriously right they will they will take their clients issues and problems seriously and want to help fix them that's what we want to do super and then another question from Omi around um, so how can you demonstrate professional judgment before you've even entered a professional environment um, so I mean so I've had people give examples of you know, ethical behaviour, not ethical behaviour. I was at university and I caught somebody doing this and should I go and tell the lecturer or should I not, right? Um, and 
that's an example. It, it, all, we're, all they're trying to see is, are you a inherently, kind of, do you understand what that ethical behaviour is like? Um, and, and some of it is scenario based. So what would you do if you caught somebody trying to take a data key and put it onto something else? Well, the kind of the common sense right answer is, I would flag that and raise that. And that's not an important point. Common sense is hugely important. Um, and it's something that, uh, again, is developed at the university. It's developed through interaction with other individuals. But um, it, it's demonstrating that common sense. Yes, of course, that's the right thing to do. Of course, that's what I do. And just emphasizing that point there is that KPMG aren't expecting you to come and be a professional straight away. Like I have no experience before coming here. I did have an internship before, but you're expected to be taught. You, as it, it's like you're not going to come in knowing exactly what you're going to be doing. You need to be. Your attitude is so important, and that's they're not going to know. You're not going to know. You're not going to have every experience in the book. You're gonna. It's okay to say that you want to develop that area of yourself. If that's a weakness, then that's fine. You're not. You're not going to be a perfect graduate straight away. It's all about learning. Super. So I think we've got some live questions that have been coming in throughout the session. So I'm just going to grab hold of my tablet Ooh, and not lose my pen. Thank you very much. Uh, so the first question that's come in is. I've often heard that when going into the business world, you need strong math skills, and are there any other courses that we can do to strengthen our math skills, apart from the CFA, that might be useful for our career? Um, so I would refute that you need strong math skills. No. That would be my no. story. <laughs> I agree. Right? Um, you, unless you want to go and kind of be a professional, unless you want, I don't even know, do you want to be an account, uh, account audit, audit, maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, or in the, we've got a stats bit where you might, yeah. where you might want to do it, but yeah. honestly, you don't, is the short answer. Um, I'm sure there are courses you could do, but if you don't need to do it, then yeah, don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so next question. I'm really enthusiastic about going into management consulting, but I got a 2-2 in my first year exams. I'm predicted a 2-1 for my second year exams, but I wonder if there are any strict academic entry requirements during the graduate application process. The minimum is a 2-1, from yes. my understanding. Yeah. Okay. So there are strict... Um, entry requirements but it's uh, I think it's an overall two one so um, and and I, I think you should still apply if you've only done it in your first year uh, it gives you two more years so if you work hard over the next couple of years you can even come up with a first I believe yeah. good luck <laughs> um, next question what are the work hours like for a role in professional services Ooh, there's a question. <laughs> so um, and actually just to go back to your maths question if I if I clarify that you don't need it in professional services Banking needs maths much more, which I suspect is when you said in the professional world. Um, in professional services, the honest answer is the hours can be, they're not as terrible as, as advertised. <laughs> it would be my starting point. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure these two young ladies will, will, will verify. But certainly for the types of work that I do, the projects I do, we have peaks and troughs. So you can have some days when we have deliverables. So we're back to what are we trying to achieve? We're trying to do specific things for our clients. So we have a plan. We have a timeline and we say we will deliver this by this date and and part of the ethics of kpmg is is keeping our word so it's delivering to those timelines so some days we will have to work very hard because you have to deliver something and then there'll be some days and some weeks where actually the project's in a bit of a lull and you know you can roll in at kind of half nine and go off at half five and if you're in a team project where there's 15 of you typically I mean I've done this when I was a bit younger and we all used to go out for dinner or we'd go down to the park in the summer and then go out for dinner and there's a camaraderie of that about it but it, it varies project to project um, situation to situation and just to add to that if you have to work long hours or over the weekends there are reward mechanisms in place um, so your workload depends on you and on the work that has been promised to the client but at the same time um, there are, you know, rewards in place. I got a few of those when Good. I have to work very hard. <laughs> uh, so our next question is, what's the shortest time that it could take for a new graduate to make a partner? Wow. <laughs> I <laughs> like the ambition. Long term, <laughs> long -term thinking. Um, uh, I, I it think... The, area, I think. Yeah, I, I would assume at least 10 to 12 years. I was going to say my 12 range. Years. Roughly. Right. But that's, um, a high, that's a fast that is, that is a very um, aggressive timeline. Yeah. You know, the balance is so great to have ambition. The balance is you need to learn what you need to learn to get there. Yeah. Definitely. Brilliant. And I think this has already been answered, really. Is there a typical working day? 
Typical. No, no two things are the same, really. Variety is um, the spice of life. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah typical. Yeah. I can't say like 9 to 5, 30, this is what I do every day. If I did that, I wouldn't be here. So. And, and that actually is one of the kind of quintessential uh, aspects of consulting of professional services and you'll hear professional services and consulting kind of interchangeably but when I first joined so when you're slightly slightly junior um, you get to travel lots and that's one of the fun aspects right I, I have over my career which is pretty long we've established uh, you know I've, I've done six months in San Francisco and I've done 18 months in Dublin but I've also served 18 months in Wolverhampton and I've done three years in Chippenham um, but you do get, I've ended up out in Taiwan and in Sydney, so there's, the, and it's fun, right? You do work hard because you typically, you know, I've, I've been on a plane for 14 hours and then landed and gone straight into an all-day workshop. That, that's part of what you have to do, but you do go and get to hang out in fun places. And, and that's the variety, so you can end up, if you want to, you can end up in Canary Wharf. I think you were saying you've done most yeah. of your time in Canary Wharf. Yeah. Um, or Coventry. Or yeah. Coventry, <laughs> equally glamorous. Yes. But, um, but that's the point. It, it's not typical. Um, and so it's very good for people who want variety in their life. But we've still got more questions to go. Um, but if you do have anything else you want to ask our panel, do just submit your questions via the webinar app and we'll get to them as we go along. So our next question, um, what differentiates technology consultancy at KPMG compared to its competitors? We're better. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> um, um, so, in, in reality, if you are looking at the other big four, on, on face value, they all look very similar. Uh, I mean, that's the reality. It comes down to, for me, again, for consulting, I always used to say there are three main aspects. It's the people you work with, it's the role you have, and it's the location you end up in. Um, and I think the general, having come from another big consultancy, KPMG is a nicer place, jokes apart. It just has nicer people because the the values that we have are much more collaborative and working together and working with our clients and much less it'll be done to you. Um, so uh, I guess being slightly biased, for me, for me it's all about it's a nicer environment to work in. Um, I don't know if you guys have worked elsewhere. I've interned at banks, which were slightly different. Um, definitely different culture but people at KPMG are really friendly um, I can attest to that definitely um, so the next question is from an international student who asks or who says I don't know if my English speaking skills are elaborate enough could you comment on how important a specialized vocabulary is so I imagine they mean in terms do they need to have sort of a very broad business uh, vocabulary knowledge? No, English is not my native tongue. Um, I'm an international sort of uh, consultant at KPMG. Um, it's all about being articulate. You don't have to use big words or anything as long as you get your idea across and it makes sense. Um, it's fine, but I mean, I didn't rock into my interview and use big words. Um, it was just sort of simple, like, this is what I think. Um, and it was fine. And actually, clients don't like big words. Clients, uh, we're back to yeah. who are our clients. They're not professional services people. They're not city workers. Typically, they are organisations, and it's a, it could be a finance department in a mid FTSE 250 organisation. Um, you know, I spent a year out in Ealing Broadway last last year. It's not for those who know, not the most glamorous of locations, um, at, an, at a small analytics organisation, which, which is a subsidiary of, of one of the big retailers. Um, they were people who came in at 9.30 and went home at 4.30 every day. They weren't city working professionals. So what they wanted was people who would speak to them in a way that, that wasn't patronising, but equally didn't make them think, oh, I have no clue what you're saying. Uh, what type of volunteering opportunities would you say are most useful for professional services? Nothing specific, mm. I'd say. Any, just anything, anything yeah. that you're getting involved in and showing that you can transfer some, it, honestly anything, it's anything, really, yeah. they want you to get involved in everything. Diversity is really one of the main things in KPMG which we uh, take. I mean, the fact that you're volunteering in the first place is pretty <laughs> great anyway, so. <laughs> There's a very broad question now, what do you like and dislike, or most and least about your work? <sighs> <laughs> Let's start with the negative, let's just get that out of the way. Okay. Um, sometimes I struggle with the uncertainty. Um, there are times when your project starts uh, and that can get pushed back so I find that I get a bit impatient 
when I'm not on a project running around and delivering work. I know it sounds really crazy because you do get downtime. So the element of you know, having a dynamic job is really good and it's really exciting. But when there's a bit of un uncertainty involved, I tend to get a bit uncomfortable. So I'd say that would be the area I don't enjoy very much. What about you, Fernando? I'm, sure. I'm trying to think. <laughs> It's all right, be honest, it won't, it won't impact. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very, no, I think from me, because I've only just started, so I feel like everyone's just understood, that they know that you're a new bee, so they need to look after you, so I feel like I don't have any negatives at the moment, but we'll okay. see. Long may that continue. <laughs> um, <ooh. laughs> How long have we got? Um, so I, I think the, um, the negative, and the positive for me is, is the same, which is the diversity of work and the types of work you end up doing. Because sometimes the work you end up doing, it's back to your three things of work, people you work with and location. Sometimes the work is really interesting and you're like, oh, I can sink my teeth into that. And other times you have to do things that really are not very interesting, um, but they just need to get done. Uh, and so for me, it's back to doing what needs to do and recognising that every day won't be that amazing day when you say, oh, I love my job. Every day, 365 days of the year, it, it's not practical. But on an average, I like what I do, I like the people I work with, um, and, it, and it challenges me. So what would be your positive, I can say that we're... <laughs> my positive would be the support. So I found that over the last two and a half years, whatever I've sort of requested, this is going to sound wrong, but whatever I requested, people have been very supportive, given that they were reasonable requests. Um, so I wasn't like, make me partner in six months, that's not going to happen. But um, I found that people are genuinely really supportive here. So if you say, I'm struggling, that's not a bad thing. They almost prefer that you say that so they can give you the support you, that you need. Um, if you say I want to learn about this thing, you know, they send you to do it. If you say I want to do a qualification, they're okay with it. So I just found that, you know, like I can't really say I really wanted to do something and no one allowed me. On the contrary, I'm constantly pushed and challenged to think about my career and how I'm going to differentiate myself. So I'm like, oh my God, like I already made so many requests. Can I do that? And they're like, totally. So that's the main positive for me, the support you get from people. And Fenella, of a very positive experience. Yes. the thing that stands out the most? <laughs> Mine would be definitely the um, the quantity and di diversity of the training that you can do. I honestly have already have done so many different days do learning about cyber maturity assessments and doing about core consulting and learning how to present yourself to different clients and also the trust that they give you. So I've only been here five months and the, my client, I'm allowed to go and head interviews with controlled owners and I think that's definitely... They let you, they let you make mistakes, and it's not it's okay to ask questions and not know the answers to them. But that you have to get involved to try them out. Otherwise, you'll never learn. So that's why I like. So our next question, I think, is actually something that a lot of people struggle with. Um, so one of our members who's watching is interested in a career in business, but doesn't know what section or which area to specialise in. So how can they better decide where they want to specialise? So the way that um, I think. I'm right about this, you have done, that KPMG has now structured its analyst programme is actually you don't need to decide. You can come in and you get to try lots of different things and that's for exactly that reason because a lot of people out there, if you're, if you're an undergraduate, you don't necessarily know which bit of the firm you want, you want to work in or which bit suits you best. You may have a vision that actually I want to go and do tax and actually tax may not be your strength, it may be technology. So what they do across the analyst group at the moment, I think, is um, you're basically in a pool and you get to try lots of different things. Yeah, well, I'm an example of that. I'm meant to be, well, I was assigned to cybersecurity and I'm now on a secondment with technology risk and doing a completely different role and I hope to do some management consulting after this. So there is, you are, so you don't have to specialise at all. It's not, well, you've got three years is when you join as a graduate where you've got the opportunity to try new different departments and that's definitely I mean I still don't know like <laughs> I'm still searching for it um, you just develop an idea of what you don't want to do so that's like that it gets you closer to the right answer but there's no right answer um, and also at at the level that you guys are I um, mean you're applying 
when you go into an interview, they're not going to say, so what part of management consulting are you specialised in and what clients do you want mm -hmm. to work with? They never ask that. All they want to see is a keen interest in the role of applying. So why do you want to be a management consultant? Or why do you want to work at a professional services? Why do you feel passionate about working with clients? So those are the main questions to answer. I wouldn't really worry about you know specializing yet. Um, I finished the grad program. I'm not expected to specialize. At my level, I'm expected to have a think about what I want to specialize in. So I would definitely not you know recommend that you guys worry about that. So I think we've answered this question already sort of throughout the whole webinar, but I think let's just very definitively say. So this question is, I haven't got any experience in technology, I don't have a degree in computer science for example, will that prevent me from applying to technology consulting? No, no. 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 I'm, not <laughs> I'm not technical. I'm not technical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. Um, I even called HR when I was applying, I was like, are you sure I don't need a computer science degree? And they're like, yes. I was like, no, but like, can you double check? <laughs> and they were like, you definitely don't need a, a computer science degree. Um, you just learn on the job and there are different capabilities within technology that you can get involved in. So, you know, you can code. If you don't want to do that, like me, you can be the bridge between the business and technology. So you speak both languages. And if you're a language person, that's perfect because all you do is translate jargon into simple sentences for the business to understand, yeah, absolutely. you know? So no, don't need to apply. Definitely apply. Good. And our next question is, uh, what is the next step after the graduate scheme for most graduates? Um, so most of the graduates get promoted into an assistant manager role, which gives you more responsibility and more exposure to more senior clients. Um, in, in my team, most of the people have stayed, so everyone's quite happy. Um, some people want to change teams, so they might find that they want to develop new skills, so they might move to a different part of the firm, or they might say, I need a six month break, so let me go do something completely different, like audit or a strategy or an internal role, um, and they go do that. So that's what, basically, I mean, we have lots of people who stay on to further their careers at KPMG. And what sort of support do new graduates get when they join the graduate scheme? So there is a buddy scheme. So before even you join, um, you get partnered with a buddy, someone who's been with the firm for a year or so, who are a grad. So they have, they are going through what you will be going through. Um, so you're allowed to ask them as many questions as you want, um, which is really great. You can meet up with them. You can grab coffee with them. So you have that sort of informal support where you know it's not like a manager who just tells you stuff. It's like someone from your age group who's gonna give you the truth. Um, other than that, I think we have lots of inductions orientation yeah. programs when you join. I don't know. Yeah, you probably know. We spent a this. week doing inductions. You get to meet. There's, I think there were 250 graduates when I came and joined. We all do. There's loads of opportunities to meet everyone, and that uh, you get your own support network with them as well. You make a group of friends, and you can meet up with them. Everyone's very sociable. You can go and meet, go for a drink after work or anything. Everyone's in the same boat, so you definitely don't feel like you're alone. There's a lot of you in that. No, so though we've definitely said you don't need to have a sort of technology background to no. apply, is an interest in technology important and what sort of skills um, and experience can you gain at university that kind of like demonstrates that interest? Mm. To be honest, um, is an interest in technology, do you need to want to, I mean, so if you ask me no, actually, you need to be passionate about something, mm -hmm. right? But even if you're joining technology, if you join cyber or if you join data analytics or if you join risk consulting within, within the technology piece, you, it depends how deep your technology interest is, right? Um, I certainly don't have an interest in hardcore technology. <laughs> um, but you just need to, have, um, you need to have, you need to be able to articulate an interest in something. Whether that's technology related or not, it's back to my original point, right? It, it kind of doesn't matter. What we're looking for is the is the is the interest and the passion within the individual. This is somebody who who can who can feel excited about something, um, and isn't apathetic about just coming in and working. You want a career, not a job, and I think that's that's the difference. Next question: Are there any big or important interview questions you would suggest that we need to think about before we answer? So I'm just read that. Oh. Yeah, so that was where yeah. you yeah. <laughs> are there any, there, there, any big interview questions that you took about really? Um, so 
the one I ask all of the people I interview at whatever level is, what has your greatest achievement been and what has your greatest failure been? And, and be okay to say what that's been. And again, some of that, because at all levels of, of industry, you'd be amazed how many people don't think they failed at anything, which tells you something, which tells you that they don't actually recognise and therefore are not good at learning and not improving themselves. Because if you think you're perfect when you come in, you don't think there's anything, anything more to learn. So, Divya, what is your greatest <laughs> achievement and your Moving greatest on, failure? Moving on. <laughs> um, I'd say don't attach a stigma to the interview concept. So, I used to think of interviews with big firms where I'd go in and I'd get grilled, you know, questions I had no clue about. You know, that's how I saw it. But in fact, the person who's going to interview you is just trying to get to know you and understand what your passions are, if you're really interested in the job and if you take pride in your achievements and if you're honest enough to admit to your failures. So I remember when I was doing my interview I was asked about you know something and then the senior manager who was interviewing me asked me a more detailed question and I had no idea, so I just said, well, I honestly don't know the answer, but this is how I would go out, like, go about it to find out more. And that was enough, because if you turn and say and try to make it up and say, actually, it's like this, and they probably know the answer. <laughs> These people are really experienced. Um, it, it will not reflect so well on you. So there are no big questions. Just know of your passions well, know your interests well, know of your resume very well so you will have all filled out your university degrees and your work experience and your stu student so society experience. So use the STAR technique yeah. that Fenella mentioned, just explain what you've done, know that very well and if you can map that against the behavioural capabilities on the website, it'll be really good. Anything to add to that Fenella? No, that's no that scary interview yeah. question. No, no. <laughs> Do you have any scary interview questions that you've found oh. like a magic answer to? No, I don't think so. I, honestly, but everyone's different. I went to quite a few before getting K, like deciding on KPMG, and you you can't know what they're going to ask. But they're all different, and they all are very friendly. They're not going to try and catch you out. That's not there. They want to find the best people. Or, yeah. yeah, no good advice. Uh, so before we move on to the next question, again, if you have anything else you want to put to the panel, do just drop us a line. We've still got a little while longer. So we'll definitely have some time to get around some more questions, so just keep sending them in. So our next question is, what's the most exciting thing that's happened to you in your role in professional services so far? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, so for me, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed the travel the most mm -hmm. in my career. Um, and you know, I illustratively did, have done, you know, the one project I, I kind of point to is I ended up doing in an eight week period, I did, a, a week in, two weeks in Taiwan, a week in Singapore, a week in Milan, a week in Malaysia, a week in San Francisco and a week in Chicago, in a consecutive eight week period. And it nearly killed me, but it was really good fun to do. Um, and, and so for me, so I enjoy, enjoyed travelling, um, and so for me that, that was always, that was one of the key uh, reasons to, to, to stay in a, in a professional services organisation. Um, for me, because I haven't had a chance to travel as much, <laughs> sadly, uh, while my clients are based on the wharf. I did go to Ireland for five months, that was good fun. <laughs> okay. that was good fun. Um, I'd say the most exciting time has been when I was given a very big piece of work. So I was equally terrified as I was excited. Um, it was basically I would be the key day-to-day -to -day, day -day contact on client site working with really senior people and I was sort of the face for that project and I felt so like I was like yay you got me <laughs> um, I was really scared obviously I was like this is quite a lot of responsibility but with responsibility comes a lot of learning so it was difficult but I just learned so much and when I look back and say when was I most excited I think it was when I was put forward for that role and for me, at the moment, everything's quite exciting. Travelling is exciting, meeting new people, getting to go in to a big client. I've not done this before, so everything's quite exciting. I'm just excited to learn more, and that's, yeah, travelling is all everything. Yeah, ex exactly. I haven't stopped smiling, as you can tell. Yeah. I'm just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no. Overwhelmed with excitement, <laughs> even doing this, you know, everything. Um, so our next question is, if you haven't done a sort of an apprenticeship, uh, not an apprenticeship, sorry, an internship, um, will that be a disadvantage when applying to the graduate scheme? 
So whether that's spring no. week or so in my grad in my group of graduate friends, it's actually for me. I was quite surprised because I thought you know you need work experience, but at least five of them have all this is their first real job. So it's expect because it doesn't have to be work experience. So you get your you get your skills from it's from doing things like further curricular like masters or it's from doing you know sporting activities or from school. Like, it doesn't you can do it without even you know it's about the person you are as well, not just the experience you do. But everyone has definitely got a good chance. And in, when KPMG sort of takes on new graduates, do they look for people who may have already sort of come in on a spring week or...? No. Um, not particularly. No. So there's not a filter that says, oh, you don't have work experience, we ignore you. Yeah. Um, there are, there is, a, I think there is an academic filter, um, which is just to help filter it. And then after that, it is down to the individual personality. Yeah. Mm. Uh, oh, a bit of a future-facing question. So where do you see technology consultants in the future for KPMG? Um, it's, it's one of the biggest growing areas of the firm at the moment. So um, the area that I'm working in, one of the, we have something we've called, we've called strategic growth initiatives. Um, and they're essentially KPMG identified five areas at the beginning of its financial year that it was going to invest in. Um, so I'm working in one of those top five, which has been invested in by KPMG globally. Um, it's the top three investment. That just means they've got lots of money behind it. Um, so there's lots of focus on technology. Uh, it's a huge growing sector, um, and, and it's got a lot of internal and external market-facing focus at the moment. Definitely, it's like the main driver for change at the moment. Um, technology is the main driver, so as the marketplace gets more competitive and things become more expensive, technology makes things a bit more efficient and cheaper. So most of our clients are really focused on technology, which means more business for us. Yeah, and also obviously having cyber security, I'm slightly biased, but definitely think that's a really, it's hugely growing. It's one of the strategic growth initiatives as well. And it's so exciting to actually well, obviously it's scary as well because technology is so advanced now. But you now know all the things yeah. that can go wrong. Yeah, exactly. But it's exciting to try and actually tell clients how easy it is to lose data or to not know how to protect themselves. So I think that's really, it's a massively growing area. And I think people are starting to realise how it's actually more important, even more important now everything's becoming all virtual. So next question is, commercial awareness important in interviews and are our members expected to research KPMG case studies before they arrive at interview? Um, so it, it's back to that preparation comment we said earlier. If you have researched case studies, you will come across as more prepared and somebody who was interested enough that they wanted to go and look at it. Um, if you haven't, I don't think you'll get tested on it. So nobody in interview, I believe, will say, what happened in that case study that we have on our internet site, on our website? Um, it, it, it's back to, if you've got commercial awareness, great. If you don't have it but you want to develop it, say so. Um, you know, and, and in terms of research, researching what's on the web, I would absolutely recommend researching what's, what's on our internet site. I think there's lots of information there. Um, and it just, it just um, it shows you in a better light because it shows that you have prepared and, and taken the initiative. And read the news, basically. Yes. Just read the news about businesses. It doesn't have to be a specific sector in a niche area. It's just literally check out The Economist or BBC Business, anything. Um, because then that will give you an idea about the industry and what's happening in the marketplace. But I also, when I was preparing, I used to look at uh, KPMG thought leadership pieces. So if you Google certain things, we would have published um, thought leadership articles about trends in the industry, you know, what our clients are struggling with or what are the growing areas, they're massively helpful. And if you quote that and you say, I read that piece that you guys wrote, I'm very impressed. Trail on top. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think this is actually an issue for a lot of people is we're often told, you know, ask questions in your interview, like ask mm -hmm. the interviewer questions. So what should our members be asking the interviewer to make them stand out? That's a good one. I struggle with those as well. <laughs> what, like, what, what do I ask? ask? Um, so, you know, whether it's it's more detail on kind of a day in the life of. So, what's it really like, right? If you ask, what's the career path? I, if, if a grad asks me that, I say, okay, you haven't looked on our website. Um, so, you're back to being slightly careful about not asking things that that show you haven't done your research. Um, Make sure you have at least a couple of questions prepared. Nothing worse than saying, I don't have anything to ask. Uh, even if it's something about, um, 
depending on how dynamic you're feeling something you've covered in the interview. So the interviewer will have asked you something and then you can have a follow-on question. Oh, can I go back to what we spoke about and ask a question about it? But typically, if, you, if all else fails, just a generic question on, you know, can you describe what it's like to be, um, maybe if you're speaking to a senior manager, a typical senior manager day. It's just something that will bring to life what working in a professional services firm is really like. You can also like make it personal if you're like really into basketball. You can say, are there groups? You know, are there any mm. informal sports groups that I can get involved in? What types of activities are you into? And that sort of stuff. So it doesn't have to be specifically sort of professional focus yeah. as long as it's within the sort of parameters of the company. Yeah, because you're inquiring about the company. Mm. You're just trying to find out how is it really behind the doors. Um, so I think that'd be the main purpose. Um, right, our next question. What is the best way to prepare for interviews and is online numerical testing something to be scared of? <laughs> I'm going to leave that one to these two. I didn't really, when I did it, I didn't have to do online numerical testing, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's nothing to be afraid of, but I would definitely recommend preparing well for yeah. it. So there are lots of example ones online. And there's one that I think there's a sample test before you do the real test with KPMG. Yeah. Um, there are books on it. I had books, bought, like I had bought books on them. Um, so prepare well for them, but they're nothing to be scared of. Really, they're not like we're not here to go and like catch you. You know, it's not like that. Um, just you just want to understand if you can work with numerical data and you can infer, you know, conclusions from it. Yeah, and it's not you're not applying to do mathematics. It's not. Then obviously there a lot. You're scared. It's the time pressure, but it's not looking to catch you out. It's just your. It's logic. A lot of it is trying to yeah. encourage you to use your logic, and it's not. It's obviously if you are going into banking or something that's more te more mathematical, then it that's, would be. That's a yeah. big part of professional services. I haven't done these exams, but logic. That's, I mean, yeah. that's, a, that's an yeah. important word. We haven't spoke about it. Um, just being logical in your conversation, in your discussion, yeah. in your arguments. That is a huge part of what we do with our clients because they ask these questions. You're like, well, think about that logically. You start here and you will end up there, and and it's something that a lot of people don't necessarily tune into, um, but it's I think important. Mm. Right. So last couple of questions now as we're nearing the end of our webinar. Um, so where have you previously worked? I think people are kind of interested to see like your career progression and. So um, let's start with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started my career at Dell. Um, uh, many years ago and I was there for three years then I moved across to Accenture which was the big professional services technology consultancy um, and I did lots of my traveling there so it was um, it was a technology consultancy I had I was taught a skill set I was sent off on a month's worth of training courses to learn things um, and then I actually went off out by myself for a few years and then I came into KPMG um, so I joined KPMG on the grad scheme after I finished my master's degree, but during the summers I interned at HSBC, Barclays and the European Bank for Reconstruction Development. And I worked part-time in uni as a research assistant, so that's my professional experience. I've had a little bit less, obviously, <laughs> but I did an internship with Macmillan Cancer Support doing corporate partnerships, working with clients, that was my main area, and then I've also done lots of volunteering. That was also a voluntary internship, but did stuff with so sustainability and part-time catering, you know, everyone's done it, <laughs> you have to go there. <laughs> so our final question of today, so thank you again for sending these all in, um, how much do I need to know about each section area of technology consulting for the interview, so for example cyber security or risk consulting? Is it important to be able to like differentiate between each area? So I think um, what back to that preparation. If you invest the time in looking at the KPMG website and reading it and understanding that there are sectors and what they are, mm -hmm. it will help in your conversation. Don't expect there to be a test. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to sit you down and say, name the five areas mm -hmm. that we have in technology consulting. That, that's just not how the interviews work. Mm -hmm. But the more you've read about them, A, you'll be able to ask intelligent questions about different areas and demonstrate that you've invested that time. Um, and it will help you start thinking about where you want your career to be. Uh, and as you read it, if something doesn't make sense, there's a good question to ask your interviewer. I read that on your cybersecurity bit of your website. I didn't understand what that meant. Could you elaborate for me? Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you to our lovely panel for taking part.
Um, and if you've got any more questions, do send them in to help at brightnetwork.co.uk and we'll get back to you as quickly as possible with the answer to those. So if you've been inspired by the webinar today and feel like you want to launch yourself into a career in professional services or even join KPMG, there are actually three very exciting opportunities that are currently open at KPMG. So Divya, I'm going to remind you which one it is. <laughs> So for penultimate year students, there is a summer internship and there are still a few vacancies. So if you just head to the KPMG website, which is the Bright, uh, Bright Network Careers website, you'll be able to find out all about that. Um, we're also organising a Women in Technology Insight Week for the last week of June. The applications will open, I think, within the next few weeks. So definitely check the website and apply. Um, it will be a week long. Um, week-long experience where you're going to really experience KPMG in our places so we'll just assume you're consultants and that will include anything from client work to training to talking with partners to nice dinners and so definitely check it out over the next few weeks. And I think the little sweetener there is that it's paid as well so it's definitely, <laughs> yeah. definitely worth checking out. And finally? The, you mentioned the summer placements, but um, there are also two-day insights, is that that's the one? one? <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's two-day insights where you can have a really brief introduction into technology, so it might actually answer some of your questions over where you want to specialise, but yeah, it will give you a brief overview of the different services that are offered within KPMG. Super, so the two-day insights are for first years only, oh, yes. um, and they're in Manchester and London. Brilliant. Well, that's all we've got time for, unfortunately. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found it really interesting and useful and that you've been inspired to pursue a career in professional services. If you have any questions or feedback, we'd love to hear it. So do just drop us a line at help at brightnetwork.co.uk or equally just look at, um, look at our website. And we've got lots of advice there, lots of information about professional services and KPMG as well. And you'll be able to find all of those live opportunities on the Bright Network website as well. So do check them out. So thank you very much our panel, Divya, Lagerhan and Fenella. And thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.